Hello and welcome to episode one of the Wizard of Paws podcast on the All Indiana Podcast Network. I'm River and I'm joined today with Dr. Jace, president of Wizard of Paws Wildlife. This is a sanctuary that we run when we're not doing this or teaching schools, libraries, all that kind of good stuff about all the animals we take care of and any kind of animals we find interesting. So I'm going to get started with asking Dr. Jace to introduce herself. Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Jace Vichorek. Um, I'm a boring person, big old nerd. She's here for the education. I'm here to spice it up and keep it entertaining. So how did you get started with Wizard of Paws? Well, back in 2017, I had a friend call me up one day and she said, hey, I, um, I'm at a fur farm and I'm about to pick up a bunch of baby foxes that are about to be euthanized because their fur texture wasn't proper. So I took one of the foxes, ended up being a little silver fox known as Star-Lord. She's a five pounds of bottled napalm. That little, um, that little thing, she's so spicy. That's my baby. Yeah, she's definitely a daddy's girl. Yep. The only fox in the house that likes you. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's my little pickle. Yep, she did. Okay, so her nickname Pickle started um, started from when she actually grabbed a bottle of vinegar and chewed it up in the living room all over the floor. It's a one-gallon bottle of vinegar on my hardwood floor, and this fox chewed it open and was just rolling in it, and I gave her a bath and everything, but she still smelled like a pickle for like a month. It's just so darn adorable. It just had to stick as one of her nicknames. <laughs> it definitely did. It's a lot better than that egg she took on the china cabinet. And, and busted, and it got all raunchy and gross. Yeah, that was bad. Her and Drax were so naughty. Oh, yeah, speaking of him, he got on the counter and took a dump in the toaster. Do you remember that? Oh, of course. <laughs> That's the only reason I know what a toaster cozy is. <laughs> yeah, my grandmother used to put those on her toaster to keep dust out of it, and uh, probably the cats from reaching down in there maybe even some mice or something don't we have some questions from some followers that we need to go over we do have a few but i just wanted to make sure we get caught up and for i'm sure most people know what we do here but there probably is some few people that are just joining us on our podcast network so i just want to go over that we're a sanctuary here in indianapolis and we take in captive bred wildlife we specifically take in only captive bred wildlife. Um, so these are animals that are bred for the exotic pet trade that people buy, buy as pets, and they decide they can't handle it or they have to move or health issues come up, and the only place that they can go is another sanctuary. They can't be surrendered to a regular animal shelter because the animal shelters will automatically euthanize any animals that are considered wildlife. Even if they've been bred in captivity for over 300 years, like, you know, domestically bred fur farm foxes and other animals. And they've got enough going on of regular dogs and cats being overpopulated. That's the reason why I opened Wizard of Paws. Um, okay, so like at 2 o'clock in the morning, do you remember when I woke you up and I smacked you upside the head and I said, Hey, I figured out a name for our business and it's a pun. It's punny. Punny as puck. <laughs> And <laughs> so um, I woke him up and I said, I want to name our business Wizard of Oz Wildlife Education Incorporated. And he, he's like, okay. And he didn't even remember it the next day. <laughs> I had no comprehension at the time. And <laughs> it didn't actually dawn on me what she was talking about until the next day. I was like, oh, Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz. All right. It took him about a week to rig figure out that I made our name into a pun. It was a... Uh, he he comes out of the bathroom about a week later and he goes did you make our business name a pun I'm a little slow folks <laughs> <laughs> he's my favorite ditz <laughs> at least I'm good at cleaning up fox shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um didn't you get in trouble with work when you uh when you used to work at uh that one place Oh, yeah. They, yeah, when I tried to have, like, an, a regular job while running the sanctuary. Someone but, complained about him smelling like fox poop. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because... Like, he doesn't smell like that. It just, you know, um, sometimes if you pull out clothes that have been in a closet for a while, they, they do need to be washed. Yeah, you try taking care of seven foxes and not smelling like them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, speaking of smells... 
that is a, one of the topics that we get asked a lot. Um, so why don't we go over those questions that our followers sent in for us? Well, sure. I pulled together a few of the ones that we get asked like every time we bring out an animal. And every time. Some I kind of just found on the internet and on different websites. Yep. So well, that first one obviously is either what do foxes smell like or what does fox pee smell like? Okay, so the first, the um, foxes actually smell like skunk. That's the best way to describe it. Some people say they smell like weed, <laughs> but uh, skunk is the best way to describe it. So if you've ever smelled a ferret or a skunk, they do smell quite similar to a fox, but I think I'd rather smell a fox than a ferret any day because I have two ferrets, and they, I think they smell worse than the foxes. <laughs> I'm still not used to cleaning up their poop. The ferrets are naughty. They don't use their litter box. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of goes wherever after they get in the corner in their cage. <laughs> it's really not the fox poop and pee that's much of a smell, I don't think. I think most of it comes mainly from, like, the violet gland. Yeah, the, the violet gland is a small gland at the, um, about three inches from the base of the tail. So, it, and it's, um, on a red fox, it's a little black dot. You'll see a black, uh, spot on a red fox's tail in the back. And that is called the violet gland. And it's called the violet gland because it smells like a bunch of violets. If you've been in a field of violets, then you know the, how overwhelming it can smell. And um, the violet gland can be, it, it excretes an oil. And it's a lot worse when the fox is not spayed or neutered. And it's a lot worse when, you know, d their mating season comes around or when um, they have a poor diet. So the, the smell can get better if they're on a species-specific diet. And they can't even remove this gland, can they? No. You cannot remove any scent glands on, an, on a fox because they have scent glands all over their body. There was a, uh, a lady in Michigan who claimed to have a rescue. And her, um, her quote, quote, rescue, she wanted to remove the, the, uh, the glands on the foxes. And I'm like, dude, you'd literally have to chop off their feet because they have glands in between their paw pads. Their scent glands are not just specifically on the violet gland. They're all over the entire body of the fox. It's um, just a little bit stronger when it's on the, on the violet gland. And some people have removed a fox's tail just because they don't want to smell. I'm like, why are, why are you buying a, a fox if you want to remove a part of it? Okay? It's, it's not I, – I, I can't find a vet in the United States that would ever remove an animal's tail for no reason. It's probably a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no vet will ever do um, do a, a scent gland removal on a fox. Yeah. That my, my vet, he, he kind of looked at me with a nonplussed expression, like, do people really ask that question? And the best way I can describe the smell is it smells like fish sauce. So if you ever find yourself a bottle of fish sauce, take a big whiff of that, and that is what a fox's violet gland smells like. Do you like. remember that time when that person asked me to mail them some, uh, like, some napkins with fox pee and, and, and a box of fox poop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I could definitely scrounge that up. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, hunters, um, if they need fox pee, um, they could always reach out to us because we, we actually support hunting in order to, you know, eat. But if you're hunting for sport, that's not it. Yeah, we like wildlife, and we understand that nature is just that. It's and, nature. And we do uh, also understand that animals can get overpopulated in certain areas, and there are needs for hunting. But overhunting, deforestation, hunting for sport, that's not it. No, nah, none of that stuff is fun. Our next question in, that we get asked pretty much all the time on either, either any social network or in person it's always something along the lines of, I think my dog is part fox. Oh, God. All right, this one. Do you remember when I was walking Gamora on the canal? Oh, yeah. Sh this woman screamed across the canal, is that a dox? I'm like, what the hell is a dox? And um, and she goes, is that a dox? Is that a dox? It's a fox and a dog hybrid. It's a dox. And she started screaming it like a freaking weirdo. And I was like, you are literally like 25 feet away from me on the opposite side of the canal screaming and making the people stare at me. It was really kind of embarrassing for me because they kind of put me on the spot. <laughs> but I did a science exp <laughs> I did a, a lovely uh, lecture there on the canal for free. <laughs> and um, I will reiterate this again. Your dog is not part fox, okay? 
contrary to popular belief and lies spread on the internet by a crazy cryptozoologist who was caught faking some of his so-called hybrid animals. He runs that macroevolution website. If you start browsing that website, you're going to you're going to see the insanity seeping out. And uh yeah, that could be like a whole another topic on its own. Yeah, we can we can get on that uh, on its own. Um but the mm. dog fox hybrid thing um, members uh, of the canis species, like wolves, common dogs, dingoes, coyotes, golden jackals, they cannot interbreed with the wider dog families, uh, it, you know, candidates such as South American canids, African wild dogs, bat-eared foxes, raccoon dogs. And even if they could, their offspring would be infertile. So the, the members of the genus Canis species can, however, interbreed uh, to produce fertile offspring, with two exceptions, the side-striped jackal and the black-backed jackal. Although these two theoretically can interbreed with each other and produce fertile offspring, they cannot successfully hybridize with the rest of the Canis species. And the reason for this lies in their genetics. So we're going to talk about chromosomes here. And... I might derail a little bit, but uh, you all get a free science lesson. Um, the wolf, the dingo, the New Guinea singing dog, domestic dog, coyote, golden jackal, they all diverged relatively recently, around uh, three to four million years ago. And they all have 78 chromosomes uh, arranged in 39 pairs. And this allows them to um, hybridize freely, barring size or behavioral constraints, and produce fertile offspring. The side striped uh, jackal and the black backed jackal both have 74 chromosomes, and other members of the candidate family, which diverged 7 to 10 million years ago, are less closely related to them, and they cannot hybridize with wolf-like canids. The red fox has 38 chromosomes, the raccoon dog, or the tanuki, has 42 chromosomes, the fennec fox has 64 chromosomes, and the African wild dog has 78 chromosomes. I have about three to four people a week try to tell me that their dog's part fox. Um, but then I also get people to say, my cat is part raccoon. Or my, my you know, coyote, my dog's a coyote mix. Or my dog's a wolf. And I'm sitting here looking at these dogs and I'm like, that is definitely not it. <laughs> um, so, like, raccoons are priocyne, they're, they're classified as priocyne lodor. Cats are Felis catus, dogs are Canis lupus familiaris, coyotes are Canis latrans, wolves are Canis lupus, and none of these can um, crossbreed with any fox species or subspecies, included but not limited to red foxes, which are Vulpes vulpes, arctic foxes, which are Vulpes lagopus, pale foxes, which are Vul Vulpes pallida, or the fennec fox, which is Vulpes zerda. And this isn't going to be on the test, is it? It's going to definitely be on the test. I'm going to I'm gonna have these guys answer these questions every single time I go to do an educational lecture. I have one person that's ever gotten this question correct when I say, can a fox and a dog hybridize? Remember when we did pop the cork at Black Hawk Winery? And, yeah. and I asked that question. I feel like that might have been something we would have got it, it at one of our kindergarten <laughs> classes. Too. Well, a lot of people, they don't really know anything about wildlife and that's why we're here Hopefully. we're here to help help them uh learn a little uh and maybe broaden horizons of people that might be curious about the science behind the matter um that's the plan anyway yeah we can I only do what, what we can i'm a nerd i like the science <laughs> super nerd they call me dr jace 3d is my superhero name what do the d stand for three doctorates because that's how i roll <laughs> fair enough <laughs> Now, there are some people that really like foxes a little bit too much. Like, you see them in their backyard, and this mainly seems to happen overseas and in, like, the U.K. They're always asking us questions like, okay, there's a fox in my yard. I want to feed it. What can I feed it? Okay. Now, I'm going to answer this honestly. Don't feed wildlife. You're going to disrupt their natural hunting, and that's why uh, farmers will start complaining. Now, foxes, they'll start coming up on your property, and... Um, They'll look around trying to forage, mainly coming into neighborhoods because we took away their forest. They, they, they can't go anywhere, okay? Foxes dig dens and they dig back up tunnels and all kinds of stuff. And when they tunnel in the ground, they can, they can tunnel, you know, 40 to 50 feet, maybe even 60 feet down. And then they'll dig back up tunnels and everything like that. 
So don't feed the foxes, and especially stop feeding them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That really gets on my <laughs> damn nerves when I see that crap, okay? Um, I'm in these fox groups, and all these people are like, I feed my wild foxes peanut butter and jelly and, and sausages. Okay, um, there are. No, you have to do that in a British accent. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I'm all those Londoners that are yeah. feeding their foxes peanut uh, butter and jelly sandwiches. I, 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 oh, no, it's uh, I, I feed my foxes <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we never had this problem back in Ireland. <laughs> jammy Dodgers. Jammy Dodgers, yes, I've seen that too. <laughs> they throw Jammy Dodgers at the foxes, and I'm sitting here like, stop feeding these wild animals. Okay, it's disrupting the nature, and not only that, it's it's keeping them from actually going in and targeting what they're supposed to be hunting. Mice, shrews, rats, rabbits, the things that can overpopulate and destroy entire fields. Locusts even. Foxes are uh, omnivorous. They eat just about everything. And I'm not um, going to lie, they'll even forage on dead animals, okay? Uh, a lot of people say, oh, foxes are horrible creatures that kill cats and, and, and attack and eat dogs, ma'am, sir. No. No, they don't. They are sick. literally <laughs> between 6 to 10 pounds, okay? The heaviest fox that m- m- wild that was recorded was like 20 pounds, and I think it was an escaped fur farm fox. And, I mean, our Drax is 30 pounds, and he's a fur-farmed fox that was bred for, you know, being larger. And a fox normally, normally would not hunt anything larger than their head because their jaws can't handle the, the pressure when they chomp into the bones. And they definitely need a bone marrow in order to survive because the bone marrow is definitely one of the main sources of uh, their calcium. And they need it. And they also need taurine in their diet, which is why you have to see a species-specific diet. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to throw cat food out. Don't feed them cat food. It has too much fat, and it can cause cataracts on their eyes, and they can go blind. Mm, I want to feed them I want to feed them pork. Oh, that one gets on my nerves the most because pork can give them toxoplasmosis, and they'll die within six months. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, no, toxoplasmosis and neosporosis in foxes, it's one of the worst, um, some of the worst things that they can actually get besides, you know, normal heartworms and stuff. A wild fox only lives about 18 months, and, uh, y- you know, a captive bred fox can live. My cousins live 26 years. I think that's probably a record. That's definitely at the upper end of the scale. Though. But she was super <laughs> OCD about feeding species-specific diets, though. Yeah, and it definitely helps. Yeah, she, uh, she was all... My insects have to be, and she even bred insects for her fox, and I'm sitting here like, that fox is so spoiled. Organic insects infused with mm-hmm. essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, we are not. Oh, that's another topic, okay? <laughs> essential oil lady, remember her? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to yeah. get that one. We're going to, we'll, we'll talk about that next time. That's a singing dog episode. That's a singing <laughs> dog episode. Um, okay, so. Pretty much, if it's wildlife, leave it alone. Yeah. Just. Don't, <laughs> don't bother them. If they're coming on your property, they're doing it for a reason. There's probably a lot of rodents or insects in the area, and they're trying to take care of them. And um, They were there first. A, a <laughs> lot of people, um, I'm going to touch on the uh, question number five before we get to it, okay? So that way you'll get to question number four next. Um, a lot of people say, a fox is in my property. Can I move it? Can we, you know, can I deter them from entering my property? Well, You can't relocate native species. It's illegal. You can get fined up to $250,000 if you even bother them, okay? Uh, But you can use stronger fencing if you have chickens and small animals. Uh, We use 12-gauge welded steel wire on our chicken coop, and our chicken coop is literally 40 feet away from the fox enclosure. And our foxes have never bothered those chickens at all whatsoever. I'm going to knock on some wood here, but, I mean, we do, you know, take the chickens in specifically to feed the foxes, but... We like to keep them around for some we eggs. We do like up to until keep them. We keep them around for yeah. eggs as well, and the foxes do love their eggs. Oh, yeah. Shell and all. <laughs> 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 I love when they make a mess with a shell, and I get them walking through the, the fox enclosure and get shell in my shoe. Now, if you actually have one that's just moving in, and you really, I really can't have this creature here for some reason, there are some ways that you can, like, make them change their mind and find somewhere better to live. You pretty much just have to make it so that they don't want to live there. Do you have motion sensing lights or? Motion sensing lights only deter them for a little while. One, uh, foxes are highly intelligent. They'll figure out that those lights are not it. Um, they're not dangerous and they'll end up coming back. But another thing that can deter them is coyote pee and wolf pee. And uh, you can buy that online at any hunting store. A lot of hunters buy it. Um, we, um, 
the one I mentioned earlier that we could sell fox pee to hunters that usually to deter other animals. Or weirdos on the internet. Or weirdos on the internet who want to know what a fox smells like. <laughs> if they'll buy the gamer girl bathwater, they can sure buy a bottle of fox pee. Oh, uh, gross. <laughs> they do. They do buy that stuff. It's so weird. But I'm not going to I'm not going to diss on someone's weird fetish, but not going to yuck anyone's yum. No, not going to yuck anyone's yum. So, you had a another question about Well, I have lots of questions. Oh, yeah. Um want to go about the one about like if someone happens to see a fox out during the day is that a bad sign okay foxes like aren't vampires all right all right um foxes are well they are vampires that leech me out of my money every month but still Pointy teeth. <laughs> yeah their teeth are about uh an inch and a half to two inches long their canine teeth are and they can't eat garlic so maybe they are they can eat garlic <sighs> bad for dogs fine for foxes they can eat, wild foxes eat it out of the fields all the time i've seen it on videos uh foxes are crepuscular okay so they're active at dusk and dawn and uh i mean sometimes you'll see them out in the middle of the day but it's not very common if you're seeing them in the middle of the day they're probably running from a hunter or maybe um a dog or a bigger animal like a coyote it's definitely not the giant c- concern though ours usually like sleeping like Probably around noon, <laughs> noon to three. Well, Those o'clock. guys are so lazy. We we have this huge enclosure for them to play in, and then I go out there, and they're just freaking all rolled up in donuts in their own spots. And, you know, the only one that ever comes to n- visit me when I go out there is Gamora. She's all <laughs> laughing and peeing everywhere. And I'm like, ma'am, you are pissing on my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else is acting like I don't exist. And then I go over, and I'm, like, petting everybody. And they're like, oh, mom's here. And then I'm getting belly rubs and, you know kisses and oh they like to lick your teeth it's that's a that's a i don't know kind of like a greeting it's a greeting and a um bonding it's a bonding thing i'm okay with it because i know where my fox has been and i know what they eat so i'm not fo- i'm not gonna complain about that it's just animal behavior yeah it's weird i don't i don't i don't make out with my foxes but they try <laughs> <laughs> they just like stealing my pockets i think they just yeah i remember that meme i made Oh, yeah. Drax trying to... I'm trying to eat my shorts. <laughs> um, so... Do you want to go over some like some of our favorite rescue missions that we've been a part of? Um, sure. All right, I have two that are my favorite. One is the guy that called me up and asked me to come and get his baby lion. Oh, yes, you can have pretty much anything here in Indiana. Indiana has... No laws as long as you have a permit and you buy your animal from a USDA licensed facility. Um, this is a lawless land. The, the <laughs> law, no, it's got laws. It's just you have to have the proper enclosures and, and stuff like that. But then there are people like this guy who didn't even have a permit and had a lion in his bathroom. Okay, so I go to this guy's house because he made me feel like, you know, this lion was a baby, bottle baby, you know, and he just couldn't handle it. And he sent me photos, and it was literally baby pictures. I get there, and this lion is like eight months old, and it's about 100 pounds, and it's in a bathroom with a bunch of bags of Fury and a dog chow that are empty (laughs) all over the floor, and the freaking bathtub was filled with kitty litter. And this guy only had one bathroom in his apartment, so I have no idea how he was showering. It was pretty gross. And this guy was just... Yeah, you would expect this thing to be like in a mansion or something, but no. No, no, yeah, I expected gold chains, you know. Oh, yeah. Rappers balling out. Yeah. <laughs> no, this this guy, I, I drove two hours to get this damn lion, and then I had to wait two more hours um, before I could even get a hold of the person that had the tranquilizer gun. Because <laughs> we have to have a licensed veterinarian tranquilize the animal and uh, so we can do the transport. In Indiana, you are not allowed to uh, tranquilize your own animals with a dart gun. You can own a dart gun. You just can't own the medications which is ketamine usually it's a controlled substance so you have to have a a, um a a veterinarian license or you have to be a doctor to get that kind of medicine because it's a it's like a schedule four i think yeah i know some people like to abuse it for well for drug stuff yeah (laughs) yeah um when i was in the military they um when i was military police it was it was called special k yeah we busted a Uh, cereal no it is a cereal, but there's also a drug <laughs> called Special K. The strawberries. Yeah, the one with the strawberries. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, okay, the other favorite one 
is the 12 Fox Rescue Mission. I know you're going to say, why is that your favorite? You were sick the entire time. I was going to say, I was there for that one. Yeah. I missed the lion, but I did get to go on this adventure. Yeah, this adventure was uh, was interesting. We um, we had a lot of issues with this one. We, uh, it was what, February of one year? February 2019. It was one year after the state of Virginia made foxes as pets illegal. So they grandfathered in all the um, the foxes that were already registered with them uh, and, you know, made them permitted to have them until they pass away. But they're not allowed to have or breed other foxes in the state of Virginia unless they're a federally licensed facility. Now, this person was really nice, and they tried to actually get a USDA license. They even hired a lawyer. They spent a lot of money trying to keep their foxes. Oh, they did everything right. They did everything right. These people were super amazing. Um and they really love their animals. The their enclosures were fantastic. Their, their enclosures were amazing. I'm, I was kind of jealous. Okay, I took some pictures because I wanted to get ideas. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the and and I mean, they were they were amazing people, and they treated their animals very well. It's just they ended up having their foxes breed, and they ended up having twelve babies. And well, the state said no, and we ended up going out there because. Um, Another person contacted me and was like, I need your help. Um, I need um, I need to, you know, I, I've been talking to this lady about these animals. I want to take in, you know, six of them. Can you help me find places for the rest, and can you do the transport because you're closest? Well, I should have never trusted that person, but we'll get like, it. By the way, you have 48 hours. Yeah, and they, <laughs> gave me four, and they gave me 48 hours to go and do this, and I literally couldn't raise the funding to, to go there and, and back in that amount of time. So I spent like $500 out of my own pocket. Um, and we only, uh, we only got like $100 in donations um, when we did the fundraiser for that rescue mission. Oh, but we sure as hell made it work. We did make it work. Okay, in February, it was like 20 degrees outside. We slept in the damn van and I was freezing my butt off all night. It was horrible. I was sick, I couldn't eat. Um, just the two of us and a dog. And yeah. Was it like a U-Haul van? It or? was a it was a, uh, a van from Enterprise because they gave us ah, the yes. discount. They gave the okay. So U-Haul wanted to charge us by the mile, and it was going to cost us like a thousand dollars just to get there using the mileage on the U-Haul truck, and I couldn't afford that. So I went to Enterprise and I started talking to them and I gave them our our nonprofit status paperwork and they gave us a van for two hundred dollars. Yeah, just your standard little panel van. Yeah, it was like your standard van kidnapper van, your big white van. <laughs> I don't think it had windows on the it side, so it probably was even worse. Than yeah, it, it didn't have windows on the side, but it had windows in the back. And when we had so many foxes, we had to stack the cages and zip tie them together so it wouldn't fall around if I had to hit the brakes. Because going through the mountains um, to Virginia, is it's, a, it's pretty rough because there are graded um, – uh, roads so like there's like a seven percent incline or a seven percent decline on the road it, it can your your stuff slides around and i didn't want to endanger the animals so i zip tied the cages together and we almost died once driving through the mountains of tennessee at night so we didn't want to do that again yeah <laughs> i don't usually stop in tennessee i don't want to get into the fact that you're a poor driver right now yeah it's, it's bad he can't even parallel park. Or he can't even park, period. He oh, tried I can parallel park. Oh, no. You pulled right in. You uh, you can't even park regularly, Mr. I'm going to drag my car up this guidepost just because I don't want to fix the car. Ma'am, I'm about to drag you across I'm the I'm about to drag you through a goddamn field and <laughs> throw your body in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Do you remember, like, when we stopped in Tennessee, though? Like, there's in that Walmart parking lot with the crappy-ass Wendy's baked potato and... Oh, God. <laughs> well, we're spending the night here. We're spending the night here because, mm. well... Uh, we can't afford a hotel, so we have to camp out somewhere. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I normally find a campsite, um, but it was February and it was so cold. It was so cold. I took my camping cot with us because, well, I wanted to sleep in the camping cot versus sleeping on the hard floor of the panel van, but Tyler slept on the panel van floor with, with the, the dog. dog. <laughs> 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 and I took the... Um, I took the uh, cot, and um, my sleeping bag was supposed to have been rated for negative 40-degree weather. Don't believe that Ozark Trail company. That's really bad. It's really Fun bad. fact that foxes can actually survive negative 40-degree weather. Yeah, uh, red foxes can uh, survive in negative 40-degree weather, and uh, arctic foxes can survive in negative 90-degree weather. Yeah, screw that. 
I yeah. like cold, but not that much. I like uh, being warm because of my genetic issues. I just remember waking up every hour, laughing hysterically, turning the fan on, let it heat up, go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, we wasted a lot of gas. That was not a waste. I was so glad they didn't charge Kept us. Kept our ass alive. <laughs> I d- I'm so glad that they didn't charge us gas mileage on that. Yeah. But we did eventually get the foxes and managed to get them all back to our sanctuary, which was not designed to hold our animals plus 12 extra foxes. Yeah. So I gave everybody a, w- a week to come and get their animals and arrange transport. I literally made sure that I had homes and placements for every fox before we even brought them, okay? I I literally had 48 hours to reach out to people and schedule everything and get everything together and then leave the state to go rescue these animals. I I had to reach out to other rescues to take in some of these foxes. And, um, I mean, my friend Kristen even came up from Florida and took one of the foxes, and he's doing so great. He's got a huge enclosure now, and he's got friends to play with, and he's super happy. Yeah, most of them are doing pretty well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened to the ones that other lady took. The, um, the lady that took six of them. Yeah. Um, I don't know really that. Talk I, to her anymore. I know that <laughs> a couple of them ended up with uh, one of my other friends, but um, remember Richard, the one that was super aggro? Hell yeah. He he wanted to bite everybody. Um, that bastard that pretty much just kicked the damn door open. And was like, ah, I'm ruling this place. <laughs> he did. He did. He kicked the door down like a mobster and was like, this is my domain. I'm gonna bite everybody. But um, <laughs> behavioral issues in foxes can be touched on on a different topic another time. That's true. Um, so you can make a note of that. Oh, yeah. Um, we can talk about Rocket and Richard next time. Rocket and Richard. Okay. <laughs> but Richard um, w- ended up going to that other lady that took um, – she took six foxes, and she euthanized Richard just because of the behavioral issues that could have been fixed. Oh, so, yeah. So um, – that irritates the crap out of me. She didn't even try to work with him. She just automatically took him to the vet a couple of days later and euthanized him. He was definitely paying the ass, but not the worst one we've dealt with. No. No, I've dealt with a lot worse than him. Um, I'm just glad that we I made it through that. It was a long... It was a long trip. It long was a week in general. It was a long <laughs> week in general, and it was a, a nightmare. The cleaning was a nightmare. The cleaning uh, definitely was a nightmare. Um... Because we're still trying to expand, and, you know, we've been trying to purchase a farm, and, um, well, <laughs> that's a long story. Oh, yeah. We're not going to worry about that one. Yeah, I won't worry about that one. That one is pretty much all uh, information is on our uh, Facebook page anyway, so. Oh, yeah. If your foxes are definitely dirty creatures. They are. <laughs> they're very dirty, very messy, and they're crazy. It's I like love trying them. to eat Oreos and brush your teeth at the same time. Exactly. That's exactly what it does. a very good analogy. So let's touch on question number eight. All right. Let's move on to some of our favorite fox facts. <laughs> okay. A lot of people, they ask questions about the fox pounce, which is super cute because I jump in the air and they pounce on the ground and everybody loves it. They're all like, oh, my God, the fox did a pounce. Ah! All right. So the their fox little pounce. sticking out of the snow. <laughs> little butts sticking out of the snow and they're wiggling trying to get out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so magnetic hunting is definitely my favorite fact about foxes. So foxes use a combination of hearing and a magnetic field. And there was a study done by Jaroslav Shtyrvi uh, from Czechoslovakia, or the Czech Republic. Say that name again. Uh, Jaroslav Shtyrvi. One more time. Jaroslav Shtyrvi. Jaroslav. Jaroslav. <laughs> Jaroslav. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can never pronounce that name. I'm sorry for all the people of Czech descendants. Uh, I'm Polish. My last it's close is. enough. <laughs> a lot of the words are pronounced the same, Dodo. Well, that's I why I can say it. You're the one that's Polish, and I'm the one that's Irish. I didn't really even know how to say my last name until I married you. Yeah, I know. I was pronouncing that thing wrong for 30 years. <laughs> it's like, actually, that's pronounced with a V. Yeah, oh. he was pronouncing it Wixorek. <laughs> it is Wixorek. It literally translates from the Polish word, um... It means Batman, or one who is bat-like. My parents always said it was uh, Wazoric. Yeah, Wazoric. That's how they pronounced it. Yeah, and when I told Dave the actual pronunciation, he looked at me like, I'll ask my mom. And then he asked his mom, and his mom was like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's my father-in-law is the best, by the way. <laughs> it's a very humbling experience to realize you've been saying your, your name wrong your entire life. 
<laughs> and he says, okay, he, I think he married me because I'm smarter than him and he wanted to learn things, but all he had to do was ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> She's definitely the brains of this operation. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Yaroslav Chervenin w- wrote this study called Directional Pref- Preference May Enhance Hunting Accuracy in Foraging Foxes. So he mentions in the, f- in the study, because they did um, a study over um, six, uh, almost 600 foxes, um, and they, uh, they watched them as they hunted. So foxes, they typically jump in a northeast direction, uh, 20 degrees off of magnetic north. And that's when weird they're fact to know. Yeah, that's a weird <laughs> fact to know. But uh, these things get in my brain, and they don't leave. <laughs> okay, so when they face northeast, their kill rate is 73% accurate. That's pretty accurate, right? Especially, like, through the snow or leaves. Like, they can't even see it. All they do is hear this thing. They hear it. Well, uh, it's kind of like a targeting uh, system like yeah. we use uh, in the military for our, you know, oh, missiles yeah. and stuff. I can only imagine what it looks like through their eyes. Yeah. It, they can actually see the magnetic field, so it's a... Uh, it's like a little ring around their eye that mm-hmm. they... Yeah, kind of... Yeah. Um, so when they face southwest, the, s- the kill rate decreases to 60%. And when they face other directions, it, they're only... 18 percent accurate and that that decrease is is quite astonishing how big the gap is between the uh, the rest of the directions versus the northeast and southwest oh yeah it's kind of like lining up the sites for them yeah it is definitely lining up the sites now i will post the uh, scientific study by yaroslav chervny on our facebook page and uh that way, anyone who is interested in reading it, they can go and head and do so. Yeah, that's definitely my favorite fact. I think we're going to have to get into that a little bit more at some time. Yeah, we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, that way, I can also talk about other things because I have so many studies to work on. See this? Hear this? This is all my scientific studies. Oh I yeah. brought a giant binder full. <laughs> she is, like, surrounded by all these books and binders right now. Yeah, it's stacked up. I even ha- I even brought my book called Exotic Animal Hematology and Psychology by Terry W. Campbell. It's a, it's a college book. <laughs> college books. Yeah. Where are the pictures? Huh? Where are the pictures? Pop-up books. That's mine. Yeah, that's because you're dumb. <laughs> you're dumber than a <laughs> box of rocks, but it's okay. I still love you. Oh, that's true love right there, people. Yeah, I married him even though he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's book smart. He just has no common sense at all. I'm a useful workhorse. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. But useless everywhere else, but that's okay. And I'm cute. I'm very cute. Who told you those lies? My mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beat her up for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any other interesting fox facts you'd like to share with the class? Oh, man, I have so many fox facts I'd like to share with the class, but I don't know if you want me to go into derailing that train. All right, so we do get asked a lot if we are going to breed our foxes. Absolutely not. I'm a USDA. I'm not a USDA licensed breeder. I am a USDA licensed facility, but we do not breed our foxes. There are way too many foxes that need homes, and it's not beneficial to me to feed and to uh breed foxes at all whatsoever i'm not a breeder i don't know i don't ab- oppose people who decide to breed ethically but if you're an unethical breeder or unlicensed breeder gtfo man <laughs> it's hard enough keeping these things alive it is hard <laughs> enough keeping these things alive without having to reproduce them so mm-hmm. if you get an accidental litter um from uh if you if you get a fox and you have an accidental litter um you cannot sell the babies. You would literally have to give them away for free due to a federal law stating that if you're not a registered USDA licensed breeder, you cannot profit off the sale of exotic animals, and even if you have permits for the parents. Now, a state permit is just a license to own the animal. It's not a breeding license, and even if you had the breeding license from the state, you also have to have the license from the federal government. Adult baby, fo- adult or baby foxes cannot be sold if you're not a USDA licensed facility. So kind of like just stick them in a box and like, sit outside Kroger saying free fox <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> if you have a fox that has babies and you literally need to contact us or contact another sanctuary yeah there's not very many of them so there's not very many there's only like three or four of us in the whole country that take in red foxes so try not to have that accident yeah please <laughs> please 
Please. Foxes only breed once a year around January, so if you have Never multiple... Foxes spayed or neutered. Yeah, if you, if you have multiple foxes and you don't want this happening, I suggest you get them fixed before mating season. Foxes are, high, uh, foxes are highly susceptible to internal bleeding when they're given an NSAID pain relievers after surgery or dental cleaning. And it, the NSAIDs to avoid are Medicam and Meloxicam, Remedil. Don't give a fox that stuff. They will start bleeding out and they can die from it. That's pretty much like Tylenol and stuff too, isn't it? Well, no. It's like a, the animal version of a leaf. Well, Medicam and Meloxicam can be given to humans too. So a lot of the prescriptions that our vet prescribes, I actually ask for a hard copy so I can take it over to Kroger because I'm a, a licensed pharmacy technician. I still keep my license active even though I don't work in the hospital anymore. I keep up on all the medications that are new, and I try to make sure that, you know, everything's dosed properly and even go through the math again to make sure that the the pharmacy um actually did it correct as well and the um the veterinarian did it correct as well because we had a lot of issues because our vet really didn't um have a whole lot of hands-on experience with some of our species so i had to do a lot of research especially on our um our pale foxes and our fennec foxes when we got um when we got remember keep their little ears all warm yeah, we had to keep their man. ears warm by using those hand warmers when Arwen was getting spayed. Remember that? Oh, yeah, those little things you keep in your gloves during the wintertime. Yeah, little hand warmers. You put them in their ears because, okay, so uh, fennec foxes have really large ears and their body heat escapes through their ears. And when you're under anesthesia, your body temperature naturally drops. That's why when you wake up, you're under the little bear hugger. And, you know, in the hospital, they say put you under the bear hugger to warm you up after you're waking up from general anesthesia. Yeah, I don't know. Never been through it. Yep. Bear hugger's awesome. I want one. But, mm, yeah. I dread the day I had to have surgery and be under anesthesia, and you're just going to record me saying the stupidest shit ever. So people <laughs> people <laughs> ask me, what can we use for pain relief if a fox can't have any of these insets? So we always ask our vet to prescribe tramadol 50 milligram tablets, and we cut them into quarters. That way, you know, we stretch out not only the, the, the pain reliever, um, but we give them an actual dose that's appropriate for their weight. And we, we mix it in, we'll grind it up in our um, our mortar and pestle by hand. Yeah, I'm old school, like to do that. And I mix it in their, their food so that way they don't uh, spit it out. Um, because you Mixing try to give a, a shot of whiskey. And you, try to give a fo- <laughs> you try to give a fox medicine forcefully with a syringe or anything like that, you're going to lose a hand. Unless you put it inside like a little chick. Oh, yeah, I remember when we shot that uh, heartworm medicine in the in the dead chicken. Yeah, it was like the little baby chickens. The baby that we chickens got. that we ordered from the uh, little feeders. Yeah. They came in like a pizza box or something stupid. It's the weirdest thing ever. Yeah, they stopped <laughs> doing pizza boxes, and I got them in dry ice the last time. Remember? Oh yeah. We need to get them some more of those. I love those things. So yeah, as a nonprofit organization, we have to save money when and where we can. So we always ask for our prescriptions to be filled at our local pharmacy. Like the main antibiotics, the veterinarians. Um, prescribed by veterinarians is called Clavamox, and they sell this medication at your local pha- pharmacy under the name Augmentin. It's literally the same medication. Um, you remember that stuff that tastes like uh, bubble gum? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff. That is the stuff. They usually give it to kids for ear infections. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, that stuff actually comes in a bottle that's powdered. And at the vet, they'll literally give you this little, little itty-bitty 10-milliliter bottle of Clavamox, and you're paying them $90 for it. But you can get a, a 60 milliliter bottle of Augmentin at the pharmacy for $30. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, it's all pretty much the same medicine. It is the same medicine. That's why I studied it. And I, I really enjoyed doing that. But then I was like, man. That humans doesn't mean you can take horse drink. Horse drink? What the hell is that? Yeah. Stop taking ivermectin, y'all. That's yeah. just yeah. not right. That's a heartworm medication. Completely different story. When I heard about that, I was okay. No, we're gonna we're gonna stop. Okay, so um, usually follow the directions on the bottle uh, because, like, the vet will give you this little tiny bottle, and it barely lasts a week. Okay, so the local pharmacy you're given a much larger, like, fi- it's like a sixty to seventy-five milliliter bottle for thirty percent less than what they charge at your vet's office. So that's why I always ask for a handwritten prescription. I can take it to my local pharmacy. So we usually follow the directions given by the vet. And we add a day on to the treatment. That way there's a little bit of an extra dose in there. And then we freeze the rest of the antibiotics in case we need them in the future. Because with so many animals, they can pass stuff around. It's like kids in kindergarten. It's na- it, it, it can get pretty gross when they pass colds around. Especially when their eyes get all gross and goopy. Um, 
It's definitely good in case of the apocalypse, too. And and I'm going to give you guys a, a disclaimer. Um, if you don't freeze it, then it'll need to be thrown away um, because it's in a powder form, and when they add the water to the powder at the pharmacy, it only has a shelf life of 14 days. So within that 14 days, another fox can get sick. So I put it in the freezer to, you know. Yeah, even frozen, it's still going to go it's bad. It's still going to go bad, but you just slow it down a little bit. But as a disclaimer, this information is just purely educational and shouldn't be used as a replacement for, like, proper veterinary care. And I'm not liable for damages that may arrive for, you know. Yeah, along the lines of don't touch the wildlife. If your animal's sick, take it to a vet. Yeah, That's if your animal is sick, take it to a darn vet. And if it's a wild animal, you need to call a licensed rehabilitator. Now, we will have Katja Craft on in a couple weeks, correct? Yep, she will be on our third episode. Okay, yeah, Katja Craft will be coming on our third episode. She's uh, a licensed rehabilitator for the state of Indiana. And uh, she took in some baby raccoons for us, and I was at her house, and her raccoons were crawling all over me. They were so cute. So a lot of people were telling me, "I want a pair. Of, I want a pet fox." Uh, I hear this statement so often, especially when we go out in public and do our educational seminars. And I did two years of constant research before I just even decided to rescue Star Lord from the farm she was at. And most states will allow you to have domesticated or tame foxes. Um, that they will require you to have a wildlife permit and you must prove that you obtained your fox from a USDA licensed facility in the United States. If you're from other countries, um, you can contact me by email and tell me your government, uh, you know, requirements for fox ownership and we can figure it out together. If you purchase a fox, um, a USDA, uh, from a USDA licensed facility and you decide you no longer want or can no longer provide a suitable home for your fox, I'm going to reiterate that you cannot sell or ask for a rehoming fee uh, for the fox if you are not a USDA licensed facility. By doing so, you're not only violating state laws, but federal laws as well. Conservation officers often go on undercover things on social media um, to catch people marketing and the illegal sales of exotic animals, which is punishable by not only fines and prosecution, but even jail time. The people who surrendered, you know, Drax, you know, Rocket, Gamora, all of our foxes, they suffered and took a, de a decrease in monetary loss because, you know, an average uh, breeder will charge anywhere from 400 to $600 for a fox as a pet. And then that doesn't include the stuff that the people donate to us when they give us the fox, too. Like, I mean, uh, we had one lady donate the enclosure. So, uh, yeah. And I know exp how expensive an enclosure can cost. Um, in many states, in many states, more, more states than it's legal, it is illegal to own a fox in your state. And this is how we ended up getting Drax. His former owner loved him dearly, but her state changed laws regarding pet foxes earlier that year. And if you do not make sure it's legal and you're caught with a fox in your possession, DNR can seize the animal and they will automatically euthanize it and you will be charged a $250,000 fine. I don't want to pay for a fox, so I will remove one from the wild. Oh, yeah. That one is so stupid. The first time someone said this to me, I kind of went completely livid. I went off on them. Oh, that's not even the stupidest part. The stupidest part is you can actually do it in some places. Yeah, you can. Um, in, in a lot of places, it's illegal, uh, remo it's, uh, it's illegal to take a fox from the wild. Okay, in Indiana, you can take wildlife during certain parts of the year. Like, um, I believe in September is when you can actually take bobcats as <laughs> cubs. This feels like bad advice. It's bad advice. Do not do it, okay? <laughs> it's better to just save your money. If you're wanting an animal like that, save your money and purchase it from an actual licensed breeder. Get yourself a nice bobcat. Yeah, if get, uh, get a bobcat that's been bred in captivity for several years. You know, these animals have been bred in captivity, and their parents have been socialized. The babies have been socialized. You just go, go out into a field and grabbing a baby bobcat. Not only are you risking stepping into a hunter's trap, getting shot at, you're also risking getting attacked by larger animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not safe. And, I mean, and, that, and that's not a, including on top of the fines where you can just, you know, oh, get arrested. If, if you are going to do that, make sure you get it on film and send it to us because that would make some awesome content. Yeah. I would love to see somebody trying to capture a, like, wild animal and then falling on their ass or getting bit. That'd be great. That's what YouTube's made for. Uh, I know. <laughs> I can make you, make you go viral. All right. So it's also illegal to rest. Uh, release a domesticated fox in the wild. Should you decide you no longer want it, it is a felony. Female foxes... Much like any animal you mm -hmm. get and try to toss into a park somewhere. 
So female foxes will leave their hun their young uh, babies multiple times throughout the day to hunt and bring back food. So if you see babies that are alone for more than eight hours, you should always contact DNR to send out a conservation officer so they can investigate. Domesticated foxes are bred for their tameness, and wild foxes are not. And that is why we Wait, if you hold, if you're gonna own a, a wild one, if then? you're gonna own a wild <laughs> animal. Get it from a licensed facility because they literally breed their animals for, to be tame and sociable and love like humans. Just because you go out into a field and grab yourself an animal doesn't mean it's going to like you. I mean, heck, I mean, uh, we have seven foxes and they all hate Tyler except for Star-Lord. Yeah. Star-Lord's the only one that likes him. And she doesn't like her, so. Uh, and, yeah, Star, I bottle-fed that psycho and she freaking likes you better than me. And that's bullshit. Yep. He never even touched her when he, she was a baby. I was all she her. wanted. <laughs> I was, I was, yeah, I, I hold her. I was carrying her around like kangaroo pouch. Oh, you remember the uh, little uh, Bjorn? Baby thing. Bjorn, yeah. I had, the, <laughs> I had the baby Bjorn specially designed for animals. <laughs> I don't even find an animal that likes that. The, no. Uh, Star Lord did tolerate it until she got to a certain size. Then she was like, uh, no. I think she'd okay. probably like it if I wore it. Uh, if you still think you want a fox, I must refer you to the question asked. Do foxes make good pets? Although domesticated and tame foxes show similar characteristics to dogs and cats, they actually do not make very good pets. One must remember that a fox is not a dog or a cat or a combination of both. It's not going to act like a dog or a cat or a combination of both. And if you are going to expect a fox to act like a dog or a cat, do not get a fox. Please. Foxes dig a lot. They'll dig for many reasons to bury food, build dens, and out of complete boredom. Just I was to spite you. Yeah, I was <laughs> fortunate enough to have hardwood underneath the carpet in my house. So I removed all of the carpet and laid down tile in rooms where the hardwood floor needed to be replaced. I bleached the floors twice a week. The foxes still hide caches of food around the house. I mean, yeah. I could get on that Star Lord took the, the raw egg under the china cabinet and busted it, and I had no idea. I and I, uh, until, you know, three days later, and I was smelling something disgusting. You only get those outside now. And it was later, you know, I found it later buried under a roll of toilet paper, and every single toy that I had given her to play with that day, was it, they all needed to be washed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, foxes... It's like a ferret with an attitude. Yeah, foxes also love to chew. They will chew on everything. This is includes, but is not limited to, your clothing, your blankets, your furniture, your walls, wires, dog toys, cat toys, your kids... Toys. <laughs> I had to, I had to do that pause just for dramatic effect there, and your electronics, including your television remotes. Um, they will chew on your kids too, though. Oh, they will chew on your kids too. Please do not get fox if you have children. They chew on me, so. Yeah, they they literally. Um, I I've got so many photos. Um, I had some, so many scars. Okay, somebody literally tried to crap on us because we made a post about, you know, educational um, post about them you know, Tyler when he got bit by a fox. And one of our foxes bit him, and it literally missed his uh, um, <laughs> his carotid artery in his neck by a centimeter. I, I thought he was going to die in my bathroom because there was blood everywhere. And um, what happened was one of our red foxes got scared, and he was carrying him, He got and he got scared by another sound, and he he bit Tyler, and, and Tyler dropped him, and I had to catch the fox because the fox was pissed off, and... I managed to hold on to him for three bites. I think yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm am I'm amazed because gush blood was gushing out your neck. I thought you were gonna die in my house. <laughs> Not the first time, and definitely won't be the last. No, it definitely won't. And uh, so these people were, I guess you could call them haters, whatever. I don't care about them, but they were they were trying to say that we're a horrible sanctuary just because we posted videos and and photos about you know educating people about being bitten by their animals. Yeah, y it doesn't matter. People are going to say, I've never been bit by my animal before. Dude, you're a liar, okay? Anything with teeth is going to bite you. A rabbit backed into a corner is going to bite you too, okay? You, you haven't been by a rabbit, yeah. Yeah, you can't You <laughs> can't just say that you know, I've never been bitten. Just because you haven't been bitten yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen, homie. Oh, yeah. It, it's definitely going to happen. Um, definitely not all sunshine and rainbows. No. I no longer have any furniture in my house at all. I have no couch, no chairs. I even had to get rid of my kitchen table and, and its chairs because the foxes peed on them so much that the smell wouldn't come out. Okay, so I went through uh, two sofas, two love seats, two um, recliners, an antique chase, uh, two dining room tables, and eight dining room chairs. Fancy. Yeah, yeah. I, I was tired of spending money on it, so I just decided not to buy it anymore. 
It's not like we have company over any either, so. Uh, it's not like we eat at the freaking table anyway, but it doesn't matter. I, I don't. This is 2022. Who's eating at a kitchen table anymore? I don't even have a TV in my living room anymore. I, I literally, I think I threw it in the attic. Yeah, I think everything's either in storage, ready to go over to the new place. That's pretty much it. Or in the bedroom, yeah. Yeah, I only have furniture in my bedroom. That's about it. Well, I have a couple of dry sinks out in the living room, but my cats decided to turn them into scratch posts. Yeah, I guess the only thing you can count as furniture is the cat furniture. Yeah, our cats have more furniture than us. So the foxes, they, uh, I mean, there's what, that one track cat wheel and uh, all that enrichment stuff, all those shelves I made. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those little mirror toys I got on the other day. Mirror toys, the, um. I think the little xylophone there that I got for the chickens. Oh, yeah, the xylophone for the chickens. I don't know if they'd really play with it, though. I, I don't know. I don't go out there with your birds. Those are your th- that thing. Okay, so um, foxes, they, they, like to, they like to climb on everything, okay? Star-Lord usually limits her climbing during, you know, back when she was little and she used to run around the house, she limited her climbing, climbing to the dining room chairs and coffee table and the couch. I'm sure she'd do more, but she has a luxating patellas, which is a condition where the kneecap dos- dislocates and moves around out of its normal location. Um, but, you know, we can get into that a, l- a little bit later. Um, I think we're going to wrap things up for now, and I'll take up some more topics. If you guys want me to discuss any animal species in the world, send us some comments and some likes. Um, our linktree.com slash Wizard of Paws Wildlife if you want to follow us on our social media. And if you'd like to support this podcast and the sanctuary and the things that we do, be sure to follow us on Patreon, Wizard of Paws Wildlife. Yep, and uh, we hope you all have an, an, a fantastic week. Yeah, and if you have any topics or you want to be a guest on here, just send us a message on pretty much any social media or probably use the email that's info. It's contact.info at wizardofpawswildlife.org. All right, well, I think that'll do it for this week. This has been episode number one of the Wizard of Paws podcast on the All Indiana Podcast Network. Be sure to check back in with us on next Tuesday for our next episode, which we will actually be discussing a topic that has to do with stem cell research and getting animals to walk again. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. I'm looking forward to talking to this guest so much. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us here today, and we will see you next time.